Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you, Yinho. <sighs> Any questions before we start? Okay, so I think uh, at this moment, yeah, let me first uh, share the screen. Um, yeah, at this moment, I think we, um, let me first uh, show you uh, the teaching plan. So uh, here you can see that we are in week uh, in week four, right? Um, in week uh, week five, <laughs> in week five. Okay, this this week, right? So um, starting from this week, we will go to the uh, the lab, related to the lab. The lab will be changed to the file system. Okay, so you can see we have file system here, which will help you to finish homework two, which is a uh, homework paper based, and a project which is related to file system uh, implementation. Okay, so paper based homework two uh, is related to um, some fundamental concept for file system, okay? particularly inode and the directory. So um, then, of course, uh, in the coming um, lectures, okay, this week, next week, we will finish file system implementation, okay, and also I will talk about uh, some I/O device and so on. Okay, so that's our plan basically. Um, okay, somehow I could not. Um, Okay. Uh, okay, let's go back to our lecture slides. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> first thing, uh, can you guys see my screen? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to uh, ask uh, in the beginning. Yeah. So uh, you guys can see the Cost organization, right? This slide, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, yeah, we are we are in the persistence. Okay. So um, basically, uh, last time we talk about so um, um, some this structure related to file system implementation, okay? So uh, to review it, a fundamental concept here is that we have to be very clear is um, uh, everything we talk about here, we have to store on our hard disk. Of course, this uh, maybe is uh, SSD, okay? Uh, but uh, basically they are the same uh, from our perspective because uh, we look at uh, them as uh, persistent uh, persistence uh, storage media. So uh, then, so no matter what, okay, no matter uh, our inode we talk about or our data, right? So we have to store, we have store into uh, our hard disk or SSD, okay. Later, when we try to get our file, then we need to read the inode. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Ah, sorry. <coughs> or data uh, from the hard disk into the memory. Okay, so that's a, that's the a whole idea. Okay, we talk about it. the reason is very clear because. Uh, uh, we want we want to 
make our data persistent. Okay. So from user perspective, actually we already talked about. Okay. So relate to the file system, relate to the files, basically uh, we have three, mainly three <laughs> system call, right? Open, read, write, okay? So you can see from user perspective, open, read, write. Mainly, of course, we have other, right? as they can so. So, but mainly we relate to this. So, from user perspective, actually, user want to look at the path, path, and uh, file name. Okay, so then through this path and the file name, oh, we can see the path. Path is our directory and the file name. Then we can find the corresponding file. We start. Okay, so that's it. Okay. Then from our implementation perspective, okay, all those uh, uh, file data need to be stored on hard disk. Not only that, of course, we have a region, we have an area called data region is used to store data. We also need to store some metadata, which is we call inode, inode region. Okay, So inode region basically is related to the file, this container, how to represent the file. We use inode to represent the file. Okay. Then um, we have inode region. This is used to uh, describe the metadata. After we create the file, we have some metadata. Okay. Then this is related to the inode. Then we have data, our real data will be stored into data region. Specifically, we also do, you know, in order to make our life easier, make our file system design and also uh, I.O. more efficient uh, and uh, simple, effective. Okay? So we divide the whole disk into data box. Okay? Then after we divide this, uh, our hard disk into uh, Fixed unit, fixed size uh, unit we call block. Then we can use data block number to access our um, uh, data stored on hard disk. Okay. Then, uh, of course, we also talk about we have super block. We have super block. Uh, then, this super block mainly tell us okay, where is uh, our inode region, where is our data region, then uh, we also need to store some uh, uh, information related to which inode is free, which data block is free, or which, um, uh, then in this case, when we create a file, we need to allocate the inode and um, uh, data that we can know uh, which one we allocate, okay. Correspondingly, we also need to release inode uh, release data block when we uh, delete a file, remove the file from this. Okay. So here, uh, in order to represent those information, which I know is uh, free or allocated, which data block is free or allocated. So we have some bitmap. Okay. So basically we utilize that to uh, represent this kind of information. Okay. So uh, starting from uh, lab, Basically, starting from this week, we, we, we will have uh, several labs related to the file system implementation. Um, then our design, in our design, in your homework, okay, in your project, actually we don't have this map, okay, because uh, uh, we only ask you to read from the, uh, from a file. Uh, we only ask you to open a file, open, then read from the, uh, hard disk, okay, which is the file we give to you. So later you will realize this, uh, you, you will understand. But uh, generally speaking, uh, we don't have this uh, IO bitmap region. Basically, we only have super block, I know region, and the data block. Okay. So so later will be clear. Uh, but anyway, last time we talked about uh, this, uh, the, the, those, those content, I just uh, briefly introduce okay so generally speaking uh, I think we can utilize this figure to show what we have 
uh, started. So basically, suppose we given a hard disk uh, in which we already divided into um, 64 data blocks. Each data block, we have four kilobytes. Then uh, we have one region is a data region, basically starting from data block eight to data block 63. So this is our area we use to store our data. Okay, so remember when we divide our uh, data region uh, into data blocks, then when we allocate, when we allocate the data block, we will, when we allocate the, this space, right? Because later when we create a file, we want to put our data. Then when we allocate the data, we will based on the data block. Okay? So which means we will give, give you, if you ask for four bytes, we will give you four, one, one data block, okay? Then after you use up, then give you another data block and so on. So basically this is the unit. We will, we will allocate our data based on data block. This is the, the unit we use for space allocation. Okay. Uh, for inode, then we talk about the size is 256 uh, in this example, right? Then, then in each data block, actually we can put uh, 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 several inodes inside, right? Okay, so uh, then we have inode region, then we have inode bitmap, uh, data block bitmap, then this is super block. Okay. So basically that's what we are talking about. So uh, I guess we stop here. Basically, after we introduce um, uh, this, uh, the first data layout, right? So, so this is a data layout we have: super block, then uh, inode bitmap, data block bitmap. Then we have inode region. Uh, then inode, inside inode, each block we have 16 inodes and so on. Then after that, we have data block region. Okay. So then let's look at what is inside inode. Okay. So generally speaking, inode have all information about file. Okay. So you can think about uh, like type, file type, size, how many uh, blocks allocated to this file. So remember, as I mentioned, okay, we will use block as a unit for space allocation. Right? So here, it also imply that our data will be stored into data blocks. Okay, remember we have some, we have region, right? Data data block region, remember, right? We have inode region. The inode is used to store those information, metadata related to this file. Our data will be really installed into those data block, okay? Data block region, okay? Then when we allocate the space for our file data, it based on data block, okay? So inside, inode, inside our inode, we also have other information, protect, protection information, time information, and so on, okay. So give you a real example here from a, a ext2 inode. So this is from Linux. This is a, a old uh, uh, file system. Right now we have ext4 uh, in Linux we use, okay. So you can see that inside inode, uh, we have a lot of information here. Generally speaking, we have uh, a mode, okay? Uh, what is a uh, mode? Is read, uh, write, executable. Those kind of is mode. Then the user ID, then size, how many bytes, okay? Then uh, the, the a set of a time, you can see we have uh, last access time, uh, creation time, modify the time, delete time, and so on, okay? Uh, then we, we also have uh, some relate to the group ID. So this is a relate to the um, 
permission. Okay, in uh, Linux, basically we have uh, three group. Okay, user group, which means I'm the owner. So who own this file? Then uh, we also have a group. Okay, this file belongs to, to some some user belongs to the same group. So for this uh, uh, group, what is the permission? Okay. Uh, basically, this is a uh, group information. Then link count. Okay, this uh, is uh, the number we talked about before. Basically, when we use a link, we can add a, a hard link. Okay, then when we use hard link to add a file name to this inode, then this number will be increased by one. Okay, uh, then you can see we also have how many blocks allocated to um this file okay later i will ask one question okay but uh uh let, let me go through this okay then we have flag okay uh and uh, some uh, os independent field and so on so then uh here i want to put uh, uh this is very important okay we will talk about this uh pretty much today we will talk about everything related to this 60 bytes, okay? Then we also have some uh, uh, generation and so on, okay? So I don't want to talk about other stuff. Yeah, I, I will focus on this one, okay? Before I go to talk about uh, a set of disk pointer, so I want to ask you one question, okay? Suppose I create a file, okay? Then uh, remember, our data will be stored into a data block, right? Okay, so uh, this inode will be stored into inode region on disk. Remember, we have inode region, right? Inode region, this is related to our metadata. All those information will be stored into inode. Our data will be stored into data block region. Remember, we have from block eight to block 63, those blocks can be used to store data. Then when we allocate the space, we will if uh, we create a file, ask for space, we just allocate one data block. Okay. The data block is a unit. Okay. So of course we need to remember those data block allocated to us. Then basically we can we can know where to find our data based on those data block number. Okay. So one question is uh, suppose we already have uh, how many blocks allocated to this file? Why we still need another um attributes you can see here we also have side what are difference between side and uh, blocks do, do you is my question clear do you understand my question huh yeah blocks has a fixed side yes Four kilobytes, yeah. In, in in this example, yeah. Exactly. I think some still ask my question, answer my question, right? So basically, some block may not be full, right? So I I ask, uh, say, okay, can you uh help me to put four bytes into my file, right? So we will allocate one data block, okay? Then. However, our file size is four bytes. For example, okay, our file size is four bytes. But remember, when we allocate the space, we will allocate the one data block. Okay, then how many data block we have here is one data block. Okay, one block. However, our size is four bytes. So basically, they are different, right? Okay, I hope you understand this. Okay, great. Okay, so. Next one, certainly we need to remember our data block number, right? So generally speaking, we can think about this as a mapping. So uh, for example, suppose we have a 16 bytes here, then suppose block number, each data block, right? Block number, each data block, we have one block number. Suppose block number, we use uh, four bytes. So because uh, we may have uh, multiple one, 
So we use four bytes to remember to represent one block, one block number, four bytes. Okay. So yeah. So uh, that is clear. Suppose we have this. This part actually is help us to remember those uh, data blocks allocated to us. Okay. So suppose we have sixty here. In total, we have uh, we can remember fifteen disk pointers, right? So which means okay, you can you can think about like this way. I have an array here. Each one. I have 60 bytes here. This is my array. So maybe, maybe my let me clean up here. Erase, uh, but this is okay. Yeah. So basically, what I'm seeing that uh, because we have block, this one is used to remember the data blocks allocated to this file, okay? Because we totally have 60 bytes, okay? So then to remember one data block number, we need four bytes, right? Four bytes, the first one, four bytes. For example, my, my, uh, my first four kilobytes is put into data block one. Suppose okay, then my third one, second one, put into data block three, okay, then blah blah blah. Okay, so uh, zero, one, two, until because we totally have 60 bytes, okay, then each one, each data block number occupy four bytes. In total, we have 15 area, 15 entries we can use, right? So this is why we have zero, one, two, until 14, right? So basically that's that's the space inside our inode to use to remember our space our physical space the mapping is very simple okay suppose we use directly mapping here you can think about uh our linear space because of our file right think about our file is a linear space is based on byte okay. then first uh, four kilobytes will be put into block one okay remember we have a data block region on our disk then data block one this will be used to store our first four kilobytes, okay? The second four kilobytes will be stored into a data block. Suppose this is a zero one two, then will be stored into here on our disk, okay? Data block three and so on. So you, 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 you can look at this mapping basically, okay? Then suppose I use up all 60 bytes, then to remember, those data block allocated to me. Okay, suppose the last one is 50, okay, block 50. So the number are not important. Okay. So my question is, because this is the first four kilobytes, this second four kilobytes, this third four kilobytes, right? In my, in my file, it's a linear space. My question is, what is the maximum uh, file size we can have if we use this format. Hello guys. Do you understand my question? Is my question clear? No one, no one answer me, huh? 15 blocks, yes. Okay, what is size corresponding? Yes, 16 kilobytes. <laughs> Great, okay. So the reason is that you can think about, okay, so suppose this other area, you can see other area, other attributes are not related to our uh, mapping, 
right, from our linear file linear space to our really uh, the physical space we store those data right so only 16 kilobytes we allocate inside inode to represent this mapping so because we totally have 15 entries this is why we call a set of a disk pointer okay so 15 entries then when we remember those data blocks number, each one is used to represent one data block, one real data block on our disk, okay, four kilobytes. Okay. So in total, we have 60 kilobytes, okay. Then uh, is this uh, enough? Huh? <laughs> of course, I mean, uh, right now we, we have a huge file, right? So even for your homework, okay, maybe it's not good enough to to uh, to contain the enough data right so this 16 kilobyte okay so uh, then you may say okay mm, not enough right <laughs> how about we increase this size increase uh, the I know size okay for example 60 is not enough how about we give a uh, uh, four kilobytes. <laughs> for each know we have four kilobytes. Then we can build up a, a huge uh, area, right? So that's a trade-off, right? So think about that. I know that actually is our metadata. This is not related to our real data. Do you think about? It? So when we store our data, we will store our data into the data block, right? Uh, but I know that actually is our actual cost when we represent this file. Of course, without this uh, metadata, we cannot find our real data, file data. But if we put uh, too much space on inode, then basically this also may not be good because uh, actually we use uh, uh, we, we need to store our real data, okay? So uh, then how about I, I give you a constraint. I said, okay, uh, 60, 60 bytes are good enough, okay? I You can only use 60 bytes, but you have to make your file, maximum file size uh, as big as possible. Uh, for example, reach to terabytes. <laughs> so you say, oh, okay, I only have 16, 60 kilo, 60, 60 bytes here to represent this mapping, okay? How come I can use this uh, 60 bytes to get a maximum file size up to terabytes? How to do that, okay? So this go to a very fundamental um, trade-off usually we use, okay? Is uh, our space and the performance trade-off, okay? Basically, uh, uh, common use, commonly used design is to use the uh, indirect pointer, okay? So let, let me go through this, okay? Then you will know what I'm talking about, okay? So, Basically, to support bigger files, bigger file size, we use multiple level index, okay? Uh, then, uh, particularly we use indirect pointer, point to a block that contain more pointers, okay? So the idea is very simple, okay? So remember we have uh, some space inside our inode, which is 60 bytes the space 60 bytes inside inode, right? Then each one is you to remember one data block number, okay? That is used to represent, our, used to store our data, okay? But uh, how about we use this as indirect point, okay? So the idea here is that, okay, suppose I store, I use the indirect point here, suppose this one, I store data block, 15. Okay. Then when I go to disk, 
when I go to our disk here, go to this data block 15, then uh, the size here is four kilobytes, right? Remember, okay? Okay, I go here, okay, I get. We can use this one to directly store our data. Oh, we can use this to store our pointer, okay? So this is the actual level mapping. So this is why we call it a multiple level index. Yeah. So then if we use this as a indirect pointer, so basically this one, still this entry is used to store a data block number, but this data block inside this data block, we will not use this data block to store data. We will use this data block to store pointer. Okay, then let me show you. Okay, suppose I read this four kilobytes into the memory. Okay. So this is the four kilobytes I read from the disk to memory. Okay. So basically I want to read the block 15 into the memory. So remember each data block is four kilobytes. Okay, then suppose I don't use this to store data. I use this to store data pointer, data block number, okay, basically. Okay, then you can see this can significantly increase the file size we can represent. For example, still is uh, block number 15. Then I use this one, go to the data block 15, then read this four kilobytes into the memory. Then because we have four kilobytes for this data block, then each block number is four bytes. Okay. Then if I use this one to store data block number as indirect pointer, then inside those data block, now, Start in in this uh, interrupt. Start in block five. Those number will be used to really store data. Okay, then you can see we have one o two four. Okay, because four kilobytes divided by four, then we have one o two four pointer. We have, for example, now I I use to store sixteen, seventeen, okay, eighteen, okay, and so on. Okay, then I can store from zero to 1023, uh, 1024 data plot number here, right? For example, I, I put here is 22, 22, okay, 24 maybe, okay. So think about that, okay. Then basically <clears throat> from here, I can read my data, okay. So my first four kilobytes, suppose I here, First one is the interior pointer, okay. Then my first four, kilo, four kilobytes will be stored into a data block 16. So I go to the 16 to get my data. Then my second, I go to here, right? Uh, 17 and so on, right? So then basically in this way, we can significantly increase the size. So what, what is size we can represent? Use this uh, one data block. Okay, then uh, each data block four kilobytes, right? Then uh, each data, data block number is four bytes. Okay, so we have 1024 entries here. Then each entry can be used to record one data block number. Okay, that data block can be used to store data. Okay, so 1024 here, each one, each data block can be used to store four kilobytes. Each data block, right? Okay, so we have four megabytes, all right. Is this clear? Huh? Any questions? Hello, guys. Is this clear?
No one answered me, huh? Yeah, I, I will give you an example later, okay. But uh, generally speaking, that's a interact pointer idea. Now, what is the trade-off here? Uh, think about that. What is the trade-off? Originally, I used this uh, uh, four bytes in my inode to directly store a data block number. Then basically, if I go to find my file, then I go to block five, I can directly get my data, which is my IO. I already got mine. I, I first uh, read my, uh, I first, uh, of course, I first need to read the inode into the uh, memory. Suppose we already have. Okay. Then I look at, oh, the first one is block 15. Then I go to a uh, disk to get this block 15. Then inside is my data. I already got my data. First of all, kilobyte, right? But right now, Okay, if we will use interact pointer, then when we read these four kilobytes into the memory, uh, basically inside, we don't directly store our data. We store the pointer, those are data block number uh, correspondingly, right? So then I have to look at here. So after the first IO, I look at, oh, my first four kilobytes is 16. So I I have to go to disk again to go to 16 to get my data, right? So generally speaking, we still need one more IO to get the data, okay? So that's a trade-off. Basically, after this uh, indirection, then uh, the performance become worse because we need two IO in order to get the data. Before I only need one IO, I get my uh, block number, then I directly get my, da my data. But right now I get the block number. I use the block number to get, uh, to read this block into the memory. Then from there, I get a block number, real block number, real block number to, store my data, then go to the disk again, right? So I need a two IO, okay? Then you may say, okay, oh, four, four megabytes, okay? Now each entry is four megabytes, okay? It's good, okay? But <laughs> still it's not good enough, right? So today's file, uh, at least uh, several hundred, uh, several, Tens, right? Megabytes, okay? You give me four megabytes, it's not good enough. Even for each entry, it's four megabytes. I totally have 15, right? So suppose each entry is the indirect pointer. Think about that. Each entry is the indirect pointer, okay? So in total now, I have 15 times four megabytes. So I have 16 megabytes, okay? So it's not good enough. Basically, right? Okay, so how about we <clears throat> want to go to gigabytes? Okay, how to do that? So basically, then we can we can do it. Okay, so we end one more level uh, interaction. We call double interact pointer. Okay, so. Basically here we call indirect pointer, we call single, this one is single indirect pointer. So which means we only have one level. Now, double indirect pointer, you can think about this one, double indirect pointer. This still is a data block number, right? but this data, this data block number, when we go to this data block number, when we go to this data block, so this inside this data block, actually it contain indirect block pointer, okay? It's not a directly uh, the block number then we can get our data, but the indirect block number, okay? So uh, then we can grow, right? So 
how to do that? So let's let's look at okay, use the, the previous example. Okay, suppose this is our disk here. So in a particular region, this start to store data. Okay, for example, 15, data block 15, data block 16, data block 17. Okay, so each one is four kilobytes. This is our hard disk. Okay, again, our inode already in the memory. So this is our inode here. Okay. Uh, the region to store this mapping 60 bytes. We only look at that 60 bytes, suppose. Okay. So uh, then we have the first one, first entry still is 15. However, we want to make it become a double indirect port. Previous example, we use a single integral point. Right? Now we want to double. Okay, so how it works? So still here, the first entry four bytes inside our Arnold region. When we start this mapping, four bytes. Then uh, remember, fifteen. Then we go to the data block, fifteen to read four kilobytes here. Suppose this we read okay into the memory. This is a four kilobytes, okay? This is block 15, okay? Then inside here, okay, remember, uh, before actually we directly use to store the pointer, then we go to four megabytes, okay? But uh, if we want to double indirect, basically we will say, okay, here, 16, but this block, Point by 16. Okay. We, we have other, right? Other, other pointer. Okay. But 16 here is not used to store data, also used to store pointer. So this is why we said, okay, double indirect pointer point to a block that contain indirect block number, indirect pointer. Right. So basically, this is exactly what we are talking about. This is a 15 is our double indirect from inode region. Then from 15 here, inside this uh, block, we store indirect pointer. Indirect pointer means, okay, this is not 16, is not our block 16, is not used to store data, is used to store pointer, right? So then we go to here to read the, the content of data block 16 into the memory. Suppose here is the first one is 17, four bytes. The first four bytes is 17, okay. Then this one is our data, okay. This is our first uh, four bytes related to this uh, first four kilobytes of this file, okay. So then go to the 17, then this is used to store real data. Okay, this is a, we call double indirect pointer. Then remember how many pointer we have if we use one data block as indirect, we can have because the size of four kilobytes, each data block use four bytes to represent data block number, right? So we have one or two four. Then here we talk about each one is the indirect pointer. Each indirect pointer actually the four megabytes we already talked about, right? Previous slides. So right now we already go to four gigabytes. Right? You can see double indirect go to four gigabytes. Four gigabytes already. Then similarly, if I have triple indirect. So this point to a block that contain double indirect block. Okay, basically suppose this here I start is not single indirect block, is used to store double indirect. Each one, each one is represent four megabytes here. Then uh, uh, each, each one, each one is because each double indirect pointer actually is a four gigabytes already, right? So 
basically, if we have four gigabytes, then if we have one or two four pointer, I'm talking about triple, right? So triple, then we have four terabytes, right? Okay, this is should be good enough. So you can see that if we end multiple level in diversion, then even we only use uh, one byte, uh, one entry, four bytes, then we can still represent up to four terabytes space. Okay, so basically, then this is good enough. Okay, uh, this also applied into a real life. Our real life actually is use uh, this kind of method. Okay to uh, basically many file system use a multiple level index to represent. So generally speaking, um, single indirect, we go to four megabytes, then double indirect, we go to uh, four gigabytes, triple indirect, we go to four terabytes. Okay, for this example here, okay. Okay, so I, I guess you may have some questions. Um, yes, okay, then uh, I think I, I just uh, look at the chat box. So I still not mention that. So for the triple um, uh, interact pointer, we have uh, a lot of IO. You are right, okay. So generally speaking, if we want to read our file, then at least we have three IOs in order to get my data. Right, so the first uh, level, second level, then we go to the third level, then we can get our uh, file, right? So uh, then basically uh, how to solve those issues, right? So that's, uh, that, that's uh, our design, right? So we also want to, uh, we, uh, from one side, we want to have a huge file size. From other side, we want to, uh, make our system works very efficient, right? So otherwise, uh, if, if uh, we don't have, uh, we cannot provide enough uh, file size, then no one will use our file system. On the other hand, if it's too slow, okay, no one will use it, okay? Then how to make a balance, okay? So uh, generally speaking, let, let me finish this slide, then we can go to, um, uh, we, can, we, can, we can have a break. So let's look at, this is the based on some uh, uh, observation for the Linux file. So basically most files are small, okay? Roughly two kilobytes. Okay, so this, what this means? That means, okay, we have to satisfy those most files. For example, 80% file are smaller than uh, two kilobytes, right? So for those files, then we have to make them work as fast as possible. Okay, so generally speaking, we need to satisfy. But how to satisfy this? What is the fast way to represent, uh, to satisfy those uh, small files? It's very simple, right? We, in the beginning, the first entry, we should make it become direct pointer. So which means that our, we, have, we have 60 bytes here inside our inodes. The first entry, at least the first entry should be direct pointer, which means directly used to this represent a data block that is used to store our data. For example, 50, then 50, block 50 is used to store the first four kilobytes of uh, this uh, file. Then you can see if uh, uh, most file size is small, then basically we can satisfy, okay? Great, okay. However, average file size growing, okay? Almost uh, 200 is, uh, 200 kilo is uh, average, okay? So we, we need to somehow to consider this trend, okay? Maybe we should provide several directly pointer, right? To satisfy this majority. For example, after we consider this uh, uh, trend, our file size increase, uh, basically maybe 80% uh, of file, we, when we go to 
90%, maybe we can cover if we go to the side, for example, uh, 200 kilo, right? 200 kilo. Then if we can satisfy this, then basically, uh, we are okay. But if we cannot, but it's okay. Yeah. So, but let's say, suppose we go to 90% at this percentile, then basically the file size is around uh, several tens. Then we can give, uh, for example, suppose we give eight, okay, direct pointer, right? Then we have four kilobytes, four times eight, we have 32 kilobytes, okay? Then basically we can cover 90%. Oh, that's good enough, okay? Yeah. Uh, most, however, next observation, most bytes I stored in large files, okay? So we do have a few files. Those files contain a lot of data, okay? A few big files, but only a few, okay? So you look at this, a few is very important, which means, okay, we only have very uh, minority, okay, those files. Then basically, we have to satisfy those requirements, but uh, uh, most of files are small, then uh, we should uh, consider, when we design our file system, when we design this mapping, we should uh, consider the majority, okay? We should uh, satisfy the majority, the performance is good, but a few, we should provide this enough space, okay? So this is why, at least for our triple direct pointer, maybe we only provide one, okay? Then our double, maybe we provide one, okay? Then maybe a single, we provide one. Okay, other, maybe we can use, utilize as our uh, uh, direct point. Okay. So something like, but uh, I, I just talk about some general rule, but generally speaking, this is uh, based on our uh, observation. The other is file system contain a lot of files. Okay, you can see almost 100K on average. So generally speaking here, which means, okay, we cannot waste too much space inside the inode to represent this uh, mapping. Okay, if we have a huge inode, which means even we don't store any data, we already waste some space. Okay, so uh, then basically we should limit our inode size. Okay. Uh, file system are roughly half full. So uh, basically, which means maybe we can also sacrifice a little bit, okay? Uh, space, right? If, uh, if we don't, uh, um, when we design I know if uh, we need space, we can provide, okay, because usually we don't uh, use up our um, uh, uh, whole space, okay. Directory, I typically small, okay, directory file. I, I As I man, we, we mentioned, right, directory, we will talk about this. This is a very important part related to file system. So, Generally speaking, directory files are very small, okay? Uh, then those many have very few entries. For example, most only have 20 of your, okay? So we have some mapping over there inside our directory file, basically file name and I know, right? So uh, basically those files are very small, but it's very important when we, uh, later we'll talk about when we find our file actually is very important to utilize the directory. But, but generally speaking, we should have some optimization for the directory. So when we design our file system. Okay. But not really to this part, not to really to space management. Okay. So uh, this is why you can see that uh, we have direct pointer 12. Okay. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, direct pointer, which means uh, our 60 bytes, 60 bytes, when we allocate this area to do the mapping inside inode, then our first 16 entries, uh, 12 entries, right? We use directly to store the data block number, which is used to store our data, okay? Which is uh, our first uh, four kilobytes times uh, 12, which first uh, 48 kilobytes, can be directly 
get with one IO from the data block. Okay. Then we have one indirect pointer. This is the next four megabytes. Then one uh, single indirect, double indirect, four gigabytes. One triple indirect, four terabytes. Okay. So you can see that even our uh, this uh, triple indirect is uh, very slow, but we, we don't have a lot of files. Maybe only one or two has a huge size. So basically it's still okay, right? Uh, similarly for those files, reach to gigabytes may not be a lot. Okay, still okay, right? Something like that, okay. So um, I think I finished the first part, okay. Next, I'm going to pr present you an example then we can go through it then to help you to understand this part. So uh, before I go to the example, let's uh, have a five minutes break. Okay, I'm going to close the, uh, first let me turn off the recording, pause the recording. Back. Okay, I noticed um, you guys posted some questions through the chat box, okay, so but I will answer those questions after the lecture. Okay, so let, let me continue. Uh, uh, next, I'm going to, next, I'm going to talk about several examples, okay. So for this example, I will use, uh, yeah, because I need to stop sharing. Uh, Okay, uh, let me find the figure. I want to use a figure to represent this. Where's my, oh, basically. Okay, so first thing, uh, can you guys see my screen? Right now I have an example, I have a figure here to show. I know the blog figure. Can you guys see it? Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, basically you can see here, I suppose we have a file um, with uh, S file, SFS. So this is a simple file system, <laughs> acronym for simple file system. Okay, so basically this is your homework. Okay, of course the format may not be the same. Uh, in your project, we'll use this one. In your uh, paper-based homework, we also have a question related to this. Okay. So uh, suppose we have file, then we have read the content, this file. So you can see we have uh, one file, we have I know here, okay. Uh, then uh, read the content of his I know and the related data block in the memory as should be now. This, so here, and I'm seeing that, okay, where is my, screen is sharing so uh so basically this is the i know so first can you guys see see the see the annotation i put here i know okay thank you guys okay. yeah so this is a corresponding for example uh, I have a, you can see here, we have a, a direct pointer. First one is a direct pointer is 78. Second the direct pointer is 96. Then we have a one single indirect pointer is 135. Okay, then also we read this data block 135 data block 135, you can see here, we read this into the memory. Then each cell you can see here represent a four bytes memory space. And the decimal number inside is uh, uh, the data block number, which is an unsigned integer we start. Okay, so you can see this, uh, the number, for example, 146 actually is, uh, is a block number, okay? so. I know the format of 
course, in your uh, lab, it may be, may be different, okay? But in this example, you can see here, this is uh, basically, this is your uh, project, the data structure. This detail may be the different, okay? Because every year we have to change this format. So you cannot directly use uh, uh, this, uh, yeah, somehow, right? To have some difference, okay? So, Generally speaking, you can see here for each inode, you can this is the data structure. You we have an inode here, a creation time, what a type. So in our file system, we only have two types. You can see that we have a directory file and a regular file. Okay. Then the size of the file, then the total number of blocks. I already talked about the difference, right? Basically, even we allocate one block, it doesn't mean we will use up all space. So they are different. Okay. Then this part is used to remember that uh, uh, mapping. So in the ext2 inode, we talked about uh, in the previous uh, lecture, previous hour, basically we have 60 bytes. But here you can see we only have 12 bytes. First, we have a two direct data block pointer, see here. So we have integer four bytes, two four bytes. Okay, each one to represent one directly block. We can we can contain direct block number. We can contain. Okay, then we have one single indirect pointer, right? Then we also have uh, uh, if this is a directory file, then how many uh, files under this directory? Okay, this is file file number and so on. so. But uh, today we will only talk about this part. Okay, you can see this is directly block, indirect block. So basically, this is used to represent our mapping. Okay, so uh, specifically, given a file, use this I know to represent our first four kilobytes will be stored into this block seventy eight. Our second four kilobytes will be stored into uh, block. 96, right? Then our third one will be stored here because uh, this indirect pointer. So we go to one, three, five, but uh, this block is an uh, indirect block, contains the pointer, right? So then we read this uh, one, three, five into the memory. Then the first one is our third four kilobytes. Okay, so block one, four, six, and so on. So this is a uh, uh, basically the given, right? So we have inode, we have a uh, indirect pointer data block. Okay, so is this clear for this part? Is this clear? Yeah, so I, I think one student asked why we need a uh, four bytes to represent. Okay, so that's uh, uh, I will talk about this uh, later, but uh, uh, yeah, but uh, let, let's assume we will use four bytes at this moment. Okay, so uh, looks like no direct question related to this uh, setting here. So let's first answer the first question. What is the biggest size we can have for a file with uh, SFS with this kind of uh, setting? Mm -hmm. What is the biggest file size? With uh, this, uh, uh, I know this structure. Particularly this mapping here, right? So what is the uh, what is the biggest file size? Yeah, one student say that four megabytes. Okay, the this answer is uh, not correct. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But I just want to help you to get a more point, right? In the final exam, right? <laughs> so can you guys try, retry, okay? Anyone? Yeah, 4104, okay. Another student gave an answer is 4104. Four, let, let, me, let, me, let me see the kilobytes, right? Kilobytes. 
4104. Okay. Uh, not correct. <laughs> huh? Why is four mil? Four megabytes is what? Oh, maybe it is correct. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> My mathematics is not very good. Okay. So, uh, first, use this, uh, this one, right? Use this indirect pointer. Then, this whole block, right? This, this whole block is used to contain data pointer, right? So basically we, we can have, uh, because this is a four kilobytes, right? Four kilobytes times four, then we have 1024 pointer, right? Okay, so here, each one is used to record one data block number, then each data block can contain four kilobytes. So use this one indirect pointer. Basically, we can store up to four megabytes, right? Then plus, okay, we have two direct pointer. Those data block will be directly used to store data. So we have first four kilobytes, second four kilobytes, right? So then basically we have eight kilobytes, right? <laughs> so then this is a four zero nine six plus eight, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, basically the answer is correct. Okay, yeah. So because I, I expect the answer is four megabytes plus eight kilobytes. But uh, this, uh, after we put them together, this is uh, 4104, right? Kilobytes, okay. Is this clear? No, 4192, right? Yeah. So why is it 4192? <laughs> so 4104, right? Right, okay. Okay, so yeah, so let, let me uh, clean up here. So how to clean up here? Cancel it without saving yet, yeah, okay, yes. Okay, and then uh, let me go to the second question. So maybe maybe I will use, uh, use this annotation, right? Yeah, from the room. Okay. So now the second question is like this. Okay. Second question is like this. Okay. Uh, suppose data block number in sequence will be read from the disk. Okay. So basically, we want to read. Remember, we have later later in your in your project you will find this one. Okay. This read this is one of uh, major function you need to implement in your project. So we already know the inode, okay? Then how to how to know it? Uh, we will talk about the next next uh, tomorrow, okay? Next lecture we will talk about this. Suppose we already know inode, then we already read this inode right into the memory and also uh, indirect pointer right, corresponding, okay? So so then this is a user a, a user want to say okay I already know my inode number, then I want to read from this file. I know uh, this is a start offside. I want to read the start from this location. Okay. Uh, then uh, I also prepare buffer. Okay. So you read those content into this buffer. Okay. Then how many? Okay. Basically. So this, uh, this is very similar to our system call we talk about, but this is a kind of a, a simple one. Uh, we want to uh we want you to implement in the project okay basically so um for example suppose i want to read from this file then uh the starting location the offset is two six eight location okay 
this is a buffer I prepared, but we read the data we put into the buffer. Then I want to read 400 bytes. Okay, so uh, then the question is uh, asking you to provide the data block number we need to read in order to get the data from this location. Okay, so only list the data block that contain data. Okay, for example, if we go through those uh, indirect boundary, we don't need to list those uh, those data block. Only only list the data block that contain the file data. Okay, so that, let's look at the first example. Starting outside two. 68, okay? Then uh, total number we want to read, 400, okay? So I put this number together, starting from two, 200, then plus four, then we have a 668, six, right? So this is the end offset, roughly, okay? Then basically I know because our first four kilobytes will be stored into block, 78. So my answer is 78. Is this clear? Hello, guys. Is this clear? Hello? Any question related to this number? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So next one. I still I want to start from 268. Okay. Then I want to read. 6,000 bytes. Then uh, roughly speaking, I, I, I maybe we can make a calculate. Oh, after I start from here, 268, it should be in the first block, right? First four kilobytes, right? This this starting location. So this is the first kilo. First the four kilobytes is starting to block uh, 78. So we have to read the 78, okay? Then uh, the question is uh, where to stop. So we look at the finish location is around 6,268, okay, which is smaller than two times four kilobytes because each one is 4096, okay, two times this one, right? So basically I know, oh, this should be okay. So I should read the block 78 and block 96, okay. So is this clear? Any questions at this moment? Uh, any questions? Okay, now this, this usually is a valuable question I put into final exam, okay? Okay, please pay attention to those questions. So now I want to start from offside is the, the first uh, uh, starting location is 7,000. Okay, I want to read 9,000. Okay, so could you tell me what is the corresponding data block number in which we contain file data? Okay, I, I need to read. Okay, basically that's the question. Huh? So maybe let me start, okay. So uh, start location, 7,000, right? Then uh, our first uh, block, which is the first four kilobytes, the size is 4096, okay. Should be over that. Okay, so uh, we should start from 96 here, right? So 96. The reason is that uh, our up, up two kilobytes, two, two uh, data block, the size is around like 8,000, right? So we start from 7,000. So I roughly speaking, I know, oh, then I should read uh, 96, right? So uh, then, because this is a 9,000, right? So this number is huge. So roughly I put them together, uh, this should be over two times 
4096. Okay, so looks like we should read one for six, right? Okay. Then what else? Okay, should we read more? I don't know. Okay. It's up to you guys to to, to answer the question now. Is this a question clear? Hello, guys. Is a question clear? Can you guys hear me? Okay, thank you. Right. Yeah. So can you guys uh, give me the answer? So this 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 is uh, the usually the question I put into the panel. That I want to repeat this. Okay. So um, please practice for those questions. That may appear in the final exam. Also, it's very important. The reason is that um, basically in your homework, that you need to do this. Then when you implement, if you don't understand this, then how can you implement, right? If you, on paper, you cannot uh, know which number you should go. The how come you program can know it, right? So basically, you should remember, you, sh you should know this, right? So uh, I, I know you guys are working on this, okay? Uh, but uh, how about I give you some, uh, equation to do this, okay? Because I think uh, some people already give me answer, but uh, I think uh, we can try, but uh, generally speaking, okay, then how, because we are, we are computer scientists, then for everything we should have an algorithm, right? Then we should have an algorithm to do this. <laughs> so what is the algorithm, right? So I want to give you a equation here, then you can utilize that to easily answer this question. Okay, so uh, this is the equation. Yeah, so let me, let me. So can you, can you guys see my slides? Can you guys see the slides here? No, okay, yeah. Okay, so maybe, let, let me switch back to the, Slides. Yeah. Oh, I use this one. Okay, so can you guys see the slides now? Okay, yeah, so that's the equation you should use. Okay, let's see. Remember our three uh, parameters, right? offside, right? We have offside, then uh, we have buffer we need to prepare. Another important one is um, how many, the count, how many bytes we read, right? So this is a two input, okay? So let's first, because the, the question is that, uh, which data block, right? So then, if we can decide the starting block, then we can decide the ending block. Then basically we know, oh, we start from this block, then we should end at this block, right? Then we finish, right? So that's, a, that's the idea. Then the question is how to, how to decide the starting one and the, how to decide the ending one. So this is the equation I give to you here. So you can see, uh, the first one, given the offside, then we want to decide the starting location. Okay, so use the offside, then divide by four nine four zero nine six. Okay, then this is the integer division. So basically, uh, we should get the 
we should get the uh, flow here, right? So integer, integer division, we only get the integer, right? Okay, then divide by 4096, then we can get A. So the number A here. So the idea is that how many data block, okay? So given this offset, how many data block uh, we pass through basically. Okay, you can think about. Okay. Then all, all is a corresponding that a data block. Okay, that a data block. We should uh, start. Okay. Then next one, B is use this offset to modular modular for for four nine four oh nine six. Okay, so of course 4096 is our block size, okay? So if our block size is uh, different, then you should uh, have a different uh, equation here to change this uh, number, right? So then the equation is very simple, okay? So generally speaking, you can see here. So suppose this number, after you do the division, divided by 4, 4096 is smaller than two, which means uh, this is a direct pointer Then we directly get, okay, from our table, right? Direct pointer, then we have two, right? Zero, one, then correspondingly. Otherwise, if this is greater than or equals two, then basically we go to that indirect pointer, that four kilobytes we have array over there, then use this A minus two, because we already passed two, go to, um, our first two are direct pointer. So A minus two, then this one is an integer pointer point to an indirect, indirect block. So basically this is our starting um, data block. Okay, then inside this data block, we, we need to know where to start, right? Inside this block, because this data block, we have four kilobytes. Then the offside actually is a B. Okay, use this offset to modular 4096. Then this B will be the starting offset inside this data block. Okay, so basically you can say start indicate at which data block that read should start. Okay, so A smaller than two, which means it start at a direct block. So we can simply do directly get it, right? Otherwise, uh, indirect, indirect block will be used in this case, right? A is greater than two. We can first read the indirect block into the memory and initialize an integer pointer called cell, right? So actually this is, we already, we have done uh, when we give this question here, that because each data block is represented by integer four bytes, then we can get the data block number by cell A minus two, because first two, first two are, Relate to our direct pointer. So then we can get this uh, corresponding data block number, then read it. Then B is the offset to start in this data block, correspondingly uh, relate to our read. Okay, we start from this location. Then inside this data block, B is the starting offset. So is this clear? Okay, for example, suppose our question, right? Use this question, 7,000, right? Okay, then use our question, 7,000. Suppose our data block size is four kilobytes. Okay, we already mentioned, right? So then 7,000 divided by 4096, which is the size of a block, okay? Because this is integer, right? Then we get what? What is the result here? Hello, guys. Can you guys help me? One, right? So my mathematics is not good. So I trust you guys better than me, right? Okay, one. Okay, then follow our equation. One is smaller than two, right? Okay, then we, we should get directly get our. Uh, Directed block zero one right. This is zero. This is one. Okay, so ninety six. This is a ninety six. Okay. 
So we finish the starting. Okay, so let's look at the end. Let's similarly, we can determine how many data block uh, be read. We can use the uh, following function, right? Basically, we want to find the end location, right? So how to find end location? Offset plus count. Okay, we start from this offset. The how many bytes we want to read. Because we start from zero, when we count this uh, 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 when, we, when we count our file size, we start from zero, zero, one, two, and so on. So we should minus one. Okay, this when we count this offset, basically we start from zero. So we should minus one, then divide by four zero nine six. Okay, then correspondingly you use this number modular. 4096, this is the offset. We should stop at that location. Okay. Then this is A prime should be uh, the data block number. We should uh, read for the at the end of the location. Right? So let's look at it. similarly. Okay. If uh, A prime, actually here should be A prime. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So if a prime smaller than two, then we directly do it. Okay, very similar, right? Then if this uh, a prime greater or equals two, then basically we go to a prime minus two, right? So this is a uh, very similar to the previous uh, equation, okay? So let, let me apply this equation, okay? So 7,000, plus 9,000 divided by 4096, okay? So uh, what is the number here? It's three, right? Huh? So what is the number here? So can you guys help me? Three, right? <laughs> okay, thank you guys. Three, okay, three. Okay, then go to our equation. Oh, uh, it's three here. Then this is cell. This is three. Three minus two is cell one, right? So this is, should be our ending one. So this one, okay? This is one, okay? Cell one, three, right? Three minus two is one. So we should stop at this moment, okay? At this location. So basically, we will have 96, one, four, six and one nine eight right so particularly because we start from here then you can you can for data block one if you want to read our data from this location seven thousand right then you can use modular then get the offset inside this data data block one from which location we start to read Okay, then you continue read, read, read this one, read this one. Then when we go this one, go this, uh, the last one, we should end at this block. Then we also use this number modular for 4096, get the offset. That's the offset we should stop. Okay, so basically that's uh, uh, the whole story. I hope you get the idea. Huh? Is this uh, clear? As, uh, yeah, so yeah. So I will, I will answer the question later, okay. Yeah, so there's some question related to I know. So yeah, I, I noticed you, we have some question over there. So any question related to this uh, example here? What is uh, use the B and the B prime? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let let me let me let me answer this again. Right. Think about that. When you only see here, we only know we should read the data block ninety six. Right. Then from this data block, we have four kilobytes. Then our location starting offset is 7,000. We need to determine inside this data block where we should start because we have four kilobytes inside here. 
then use this uh, a use this b b is our f modular then we know b is the starting offset we should read b is the offset to start in this block right correspondingly b prime also is the offset we should stop I hope I answer your question. Basically, this is related to your implementation. When you when you go to your project, then uh, we may ask you to read from a particular file. Then you should read based on those uh, range. Okay, so project in the group. Okay. So. Um, Uh, project is not a group project, okay? Project is individual, yeah. So I will answer other question, okay? So basically, uh, any other question related to this example? Okay. Okay, next I'm going to introduce a little bit, okay? So uh, of course we don't have enough time to finish this part, but this is another very important part. So look at here. When we have this uh, read, we need an inode number here, right? Uh, in our uh, system call, actually, uh, we have a, a file descriptor. Then file descriptor finally connect to the inode. So uh, for our project, to make it simple, we directly use the inode number here. Okay. So. The question is that how to get inode number given a file? The, the reason is that when we open a file, when we may provide this past and uh, file name from user perspective, this uh, user only provides this. Okay? However, our internal representation for this file is inode, right? So the question is, How to find the inode given a pass and a file name? Uh, so can you guys uh, um, think about this? Uh, hash map? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can use hash map and so on to speed up. Right? So, but fundamentally, how to do this? Okay, so I think once when once you see that start from root directory. Okay. So remember, remember when we talk about the directory, we we see that directory is a special file that contain a list uh, entry name and I know number pair. We also use a program to print out this I know and the file name, right? So Basically, we should start from root directory in order to find our inode, corresponding inode number, okay? So our root directory should have a inode number, every, every, everybody know, okay? So otherwise we cannot find it, okay? So our root directory file, the inode number, we know. For example, in our case, suppose we use inode number one, okay? Use inode number one to, for our root directory. So this is a given, okay? We have to know this, okay? Then remember, our root directory will contain the mapping under this, immediately under the root directory, all those files under the directory. This is it, the, the content is a list, entry name, and a number. Then of course we have other information. For example, I mentioned, okay. But but uh, but in our in your project, okay, to make it simple, we only have uh, uh, I know number, fixed I know number and the name, file name. Okay. Also our file name is a fixed sign, okay, then to make it simple. Then forget about those parts that's that's used to like to reduce the sign. 
So then how to do that? Okay, the idea is that because we, we have I know number given for the root directory, then you go to the root directory, go to this I know, right? Suppose this is our hard disk. Then this is our I know region. Suppose we, we have zero is empty. Then I know the one is, this is our I know region. Okay. Then I know one is for our root directory. Okay. Then because we know this, then we go to our hard disk to find I know the one, to read I know the one into the uh, memory. Then inside this, uh, uh root directory file the data will be stored into that mapping remember that mapping we have a direct pointer indirect pointer that represent uh the data block for our data storage okay then from those data block for example here is the first data block then we read this data block the content should be a mapping for this uh, inode and the file name, right? Think about that. The, the, the root directory, directory file, this, this is uh, uh, very important. So directory file, the file content is uh, file name and inode number pair, okay? Then from the root directory, then we know this uh, mapping, then if, we find our corresponding, for example, we go to this A under root directory A, then we want to find the file F1 under uh, directory file A, okay? So this is the path we go. Then from root directory, because we know the idle number, then we go to idle number to read it into the memory. Then to read the content, then how to read the content? We go to this inode, we find the uh, data block for uh, for the for the data, right? Real data we stored inside the root directory. It should be, as we mentioned, we have dot and the dot dot, right? So parents, uh, uh, current directory and the parents, right? So suppose for this is root directory. So suppose uh, we use the number one, I know number one to for the root directory. Okay, so this, this is the file name, right? File name, this is the I node, okay? Then what, what is the, what, what is the parents of the root directory? Huh? Who is the, the parents of the root directory? <laughs> Root directory, there's no parents, right? No parents. So here, parents also the itself, okay? Also is one. Okay, then we should have a file name called A. Then correspondingly, we have I know number. Suppose we have two, okay? Then for this, if we don't have a file name A, in this root directory file, then basically we know, oh, there's no such, uh, this path is wrong. Okay. So suppose we know this, okay, we find, oh, A, okay. The, we know the I know number is two. So then we go to the I know region to find I know the two. Okay, then read this I know into the memory. Then inside this I know, we know uh, what is the data block related to this uh, uh, directory file A. Okay, then inside, similarly, we have dot, 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 okay. Dot is current file A, right? So we know the I know number is two. Parents is root, which is one. Then we have F1, okay, suppose it's three. Then basically we know, oh, this is I know number three. Then basically we know, we return, I know three. Then we finish, okay. Okay. Uh, Basically, I will repeat this part, okay? I, I just want to mention this first, then next time I will show you details and also give you an example, okay? This part also is very important, related to your project, related to the uh, homework, okay? So uh, that's all for today's lecture.
Okay. Yeah, I know some students say confused. That's good. Okay. So if uh, you uh you are not confused, then uh everything is clear. Then you don't need to come, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So uh. Uh, next time for directory part, don't worry. Okay, I will talk about directory part again. Um, uh, next time I will show you example, then it will be clear. Um, but right now I, I will answer question related to the inode part. So because I only have very few minutes, a few minutes to talk about directory. So it's uh, it should be very confused. Okay, so uh, we go to the QA session. Then, if uh, you want to stay here, then you are welcome. Then, if uh, uh, you have uh, other thing to do, then yeah, it's okay. You can leave now. So let me go go back to answer some questions. I I noticed we have uh, some question. So uh, first thing, can you guys see the whiteboard and the question I? Post here. Okay, thank you guys. Okay. Uh, block has a, a fixed size. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is a uh, four kilobytes in our case. Then also in most system we use four kilobytes for the uh, efficiency. Right. Well, may not use all block. Yeah. So I think this is related to uh, the question size and the block, right? So basically, inside inode, inside inode, we have two attributes. One is the size, another one is the block number, right? Then, so the different is the size is the real size, but the block number actually is how many blocks we allocate. Okay, so because we may not fully utilize the block, so the size cannot be direct, directly translated into the block number. Block number can not be directly translated inside. Okay, so this is why we need the both. Okay. So I think uh, re some some related to the question asked. I think uh, yeah, already answered. So when student ask, uh, uh, if store sequentially, it be such a waste to store all data all data block address. I I don't I don't understand this question. Okay. So store sequentially it would be such a waste to store all the data block address. So what, what what I don't know what what do you mean? Maybe you can clarify this question. So I, I will answer the other question first. Okay, so this question is how does the CPU know the block contain indirect pointer but not data? Okay, so that's based on our design, right? As I show to you. We have a region is I know region in the block. We have region is data block. Everything need to be fixed. And also our I know data structure I already provide you. It's designed by us. We need to de determine this. Okay, everything is determined by us. We determine this. Then we know oh this is indirect point. For this number is indirect point. So to answer your question, it's based on the our design. Design right. So first, uh, so we have uh, see in on disk, we have I know the region. So this part we know, right? We can we can go to a particular I know, right? Second, we have data region. Okay, then basically we know everything. Then then use the uh, I know. Then inside we have mapping. Then we can we can know we can know we can know uh like a pointer indirect pointer and so on. So uh but uh, direct to to maybe I directly answer a question. Okay. So this is determined by us, right? It's determined by us. Okay, so basically uh in, in our data structure, we'll say, okay, oh this this one, this one. This is a direct pointer, that is the indirect pointer, as I showed to you, right? So I hope I already answered the question. So we need to determine the inode, this structure. Right? 
in which we cannot right which one is uh, uh, direct or indirect okay so next question what are why the number for direct pointer is 12 how can we get this number okay so uh basically so this is the relate to the that ext2 design right inside the inode we have 60 bytes for mapping okay then because we use the integer we use the integer to represent the data block number. Data block number is represent by an integer. That's four bytes. Okay. So in total, in total we have sixty divided by four. Then we, we can have 15 entries, right? Okay. Then we have one single indirect, one single indirect, one double indirect, one triple indirect pointer. This occupy three entries. Okay. Then basically, so total we have 15 minus 3, then we have 12 entry, right? For uh direct pointer. Okay, I hope I answer your question. But uh, there will be a lot of IO. So I think I answered the question. So for the triple, right? Triple pointer, triple indirect pointer, maybe. Triple indirect pointer. Yeah, you are right. Yeah, you are right. Okay, but that's trade off, right? So we want to use a fixed sign. So basically, I think I answered some question here. Why we need four bytes to represent one data block? Yeah, so that's, again, I, I think I already answered the question. So basically I said, okay, data block number is represented by an integer, right? So which is a four bytes. So why we need four bytes? Okay, because this is represented as an integer. Okay, so basically usually we use the four bytes to represent the data block number. Okay. So this is related to some answer to my uh, question, right? So uh yeah. Okay, uh I want to make sure you guys still follow me. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Can you guys see the... Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, somehow it's a kind of, you know, it's online, it's always... Can you repeat again? <laughs> okay, why 96? I think I, I already give you equation, right? So you need to, you need to work with those equation, right? Yeah. Maybe I didn't get some questions. Okay, but I think I get the most questions here. So let me go back to have some new questions here. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's start from confused, right? Yeah, don't worry. So we'll talk about this directory again. Okay, I, I will clean up here. Clean up. Yeah, so I will copy some new question here. If it is, uh, uh, so the CPU, no. So generally speaking, don't, don't see the CPU, right? So basically it's our program, right? So this is our design, our program. Our, pro our program need to know these things, right? So basically this is uh, related to our file system, 
power process need to determine all those all those numbers for example how many levels in direction then which is indirect pointer and so on is that okay so this is exactly what we use that to design right you can see that when i show example we also have this structure later in the project uh, you can see we will provide a data structure for the inode that you know inode is organized like this way then basically file system i know design is part of a file system design think about that okay basically that's a part of a file system design right i i hope i answer your question yeah so let me see okay so uh, any other question? I think maybe I didn't answer one question in the beginning. I don't understand that question. But uh, if the student, uh, that student want to clarify that question, maybe I can answer that question, yeah. Otherwise, uh, let me see. I, I don't see new questions. So uh, any other questions related to iNode? Yeah, I will talk about directory tomorrow. Okay, don't worry about directory part. So it looks like uh, no other question. Okay, uh, so then that's all for today. I will see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.